Oh, my God. We have a caller on KBET Radio in Las Vegas who says he is a neighbor of the shooter. This man has not appeared on any other show in America. Is this true? Before I take him, call screener. We have a caller on the line from KBET Radio in Las Vegas who says he is a neighbor of the maniac who did the shooting. Rick on line nine, please go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Savage, how are you today? Are you really a neighbor of this maniac? I, w I was, yes, sir. And I, I'm, I'm no longer in, in Mesquite anymore. I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But I was his neighbor for about seven, eight months in Mesquite. And uh, I, I can tell you 100% that they, they, this is not that kind of guy. Um, hmm. I, I was there working and seen him probably every other day on my way home. He used to sit with his garage open and sit out there in his driveway with his lawn chair right at the edge of the garage and, and, the, and the driveway. And he would wave all the time when I was going by. Really nice guy. There's a little uh, bar around the corner where they have uh, poker vending machines where you sit at the bar, you know. Mm -hmm. He used to go down there all the time and sit there and drink drink a few beers and a couple, have a few drinks and play that little vending that little vending slot machine uh, with the uh, video. Well, Rick, you're, ta you're talking about a man who has just committed the greatest mass murder in American history, and you're making him sound like an ordinary guy who wasn't violent, didn't have any Nazi flags in the garage, uh, didn't seem crazy to you. Are you sure it was him? Uh, I'm 100% positive. I'm 100% positive. I know exactly who the guy is. I was in the Marine Corps, and I, I've, I've talked to this guy. Person, we drank beer together, not just in passing, kind of sitting there playing games together. I had another guy work for me. His name was Steve, and we used to go to that same bar after work and 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 have a few drinks and play video poker as well. And he would sit there too, and we we would just talk about nonsense stuff. And I told him that I was in the Marine Corps, that talked about guns and all kinds of stuff. He he never even told me that he owned a gun. He, did he ex did he express any political opinions to you in those discussions? No, sir. No, sir. Not a thing. I, I, I mean, other than I told him because I was wearing a Trump team shirt that said Trump team on it, and he was a Trump fan. But other than that, <laughs> we didn't talk about it. Oh, don't let that get out. I know. <laughs> But and then the the uh, the acoustics. When you started talking about that, I was when I decided to call because I, I know I've been fired at with a 7.62 AK-47 thousands of times, and I can tell you, with beyond a shadow of a doubt, that that is a 7.62 round. There's no doubt in my mind. You can you can tell, like your previous caller said, by the thud of it at the end of it and the discharge rate. Uh, 22 fires at a lot faster velocity and a, and, and a more rapid recession than the seven. But but do you confirm that this was a belt a belt firing weapon? If not a belt, not, now you have to be careful when you define belt fed weapon because that could be a drum mag, it could be a, a belt fed from the side. I would say it was probably a 50 round drum magazine. Not an extended uh, mag. Not now are are, are are 50 round drum magazines legal? Yes, they are. In some states, they are, and I frankly argued against private ownership of these before, and I was roundly attacked by individuals who called this program. I said, what the hell do you need a thing like that for? I'm and, of course, the, st the standard answer is we're going to hold off the U.S. government when it comes for us. But going back to your main point, Rick, and I need to confirm this. I'm just going to take you on your word because what you just said has not been heard on any network. It's going to be picked up and played elsewhere. I know that, and, you know, thanks to the Savage Nation, you are a man who was a former neighbor of this shooter, and you say he was an average Joe, never expressed any political opinions, um, no religious affiliation. Is that true? That's 100 percent true, yes, sir. And, and I, wow. I've already I've already talked to the Clark County Sheriff's Department this morning, called them and told them everything I know and and everything that has, was said between me and the guy. Now this was this was spring. I was there in December of 2015 all the way until June of, of 2016. I was his neighbor for that entire time. And in Mesquite? In Mesquite, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Unbelievable. I, I, I multiple times.
times. I've spoke with him multiple times. I have a – and I'm not a big conspiracy theory guy, but it, it don't sit right. I know this guy. I've, I've drank beer with this guy. It, All right, so, okay, you're not a conspiracy theorist. Ordinary guy, doesn't snap, something's wrong with the picture. Clean skin, was he brainwashed? I don't I, – I don't think so. He was too smart of a guy, too smart of a guy to be to be brainwashed. I think. You know that's all right. So wait, you don't go for conspiracy. He wasn't brainwashed. So what is your instinct telling you as a man who's been in combat? Obviously, you have very a very very heightened sense of reality. What is your instinct telling you? It's a setup. I know, and I know that sounds weird, but it's got to be a setup. What, what more? How does the- wow, wait a minute. Hold on. I, I understand what you're saying. That's the body they found in the room, but he may not have been the shooter. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, how many movies have you seen with that exact same plot? I mean, oh my God. How does it describe multiple people running through the crowd? What, two people running through the crowd saying you're all going to die? Yes. And then all of a sudden. It's some average Joe guy who was an accountant who spent his days gambling at the video poker machine around the corner from his house drinking beer. Who, for all, all right. So, by if you were right, if you were writing the mystery novel, there are far more nefarious players involved. They did the shooting. They broke into his room and killed him and made him look like the shooter by laying guns in the room. Absolutely, and he he had been there since the 28th of September. Yeah, and then, and then finally on the last day of the last show of the concert, he, he starts shooting people. I mean, it, it, you know, it doesn't add up. Why didn't he shoot people a long time ago? What did he do? Go out and enjoy his weekend, and then decide he was going to kill people? Like it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up to me, especially not this guy. You know, this, not this guy. So you're you're confirming in your mind a conspiracy theory. In your mind, we call it that. Call it what you want. That's the person they found in the room, but we don't know if he was the shooter. Is what you're saying? That's that's what I'm taking it as. I mean, prove to me he was the shooter. Show me the ballistics on his hands from him shooting and on his clothes from him him shooting all these shots. On top of that, watch the videos. AK-47, watch any video from when we were in Afghanistan. And an AK, the end of an AK-47 in the middle of the night lights up like a Christmas light with a flash. There's nothing the, coming out of that room. The, wait, there were no flashes coming out of the windows of the Mandalay? Watch the videos. I've, I've watched. I've watched them on Twitter and on YouTube a hundred times. And they're looking at the Mandalay Bay and all of and a lot of these uh, cell phones that people are holding. And you don't see a flash one coming out of that room. Well, did he have a flash suppressor on the end of his weapon? You wouldn't. Have, I mean, there's still. I mean, you're 30 stories up in the middle of the night. You're going to see something. I mean, but why would he? And anyway, why would he need a flash suppressor if he was just randomly shooting into a crowd? What, what's that for? Whoever was doing it knew that they would be caught eventually, but you're saying he didn't even do it. I mean, I'm not going to say he didn't do it, but it's just hard to believe. It's really hard to believe knowing the guy. That this All right, you, I want to repeat what, we're, what we've been talking about because I'm going to play this sound again tomorrow. Jim, we got to grab this. This caller, Rick, from KBET in Las Vegas, says he used to live next to the alleged shooter. He doesn't believe this alleged shooter did it for the reasons he described. And he's not given to conspiracy theories, but he thinks the whole thing was a setup and there are other individuals involved. Does that, does that accurately depict what you are saying, Rick? Yes, for the most part. I mean, it, it sounds harsh coming off like that because it makes me sound like a, <laughs> like a weirdo, you know, but there's <laughs> too much involved knowing the guy personally. So, all right, all right, weirdo. Don't worry about it, weirdo. This country takes weirdos to figure things out, but you're not a weirdo. You're an American patriot who's actually faced bullets flying at him from an AK-47. Rick, thanks for calling from Las Vegas. Well, we'll have to see where this all plays out.